Dan Ullman, Matt Bernier from beautiful Belmont Park on Belmont Stakes Day. But our DRF.com Formulator Race of the Day for Sunday, June the 11th, is at Woodbine. It's a really nice race. Race number nine at a mile and an eighth on the Tapito surface. $500,000 is the purse. It's the extremely prestigious Woodbine Oaks for three-year-old fillies. Matt, let's talk about this field in post position order. Speed down towards the inside with the one stallion heiress. Yeah, and you know, you look at it from a figure standpoint. The first three starts for this filly, very, very impressive. Gate to wire fashion, open length wins. And then when she got a little bit of a class test, now keep in mind it was over less than firm going. She didn't go on with it. The blinkers come on here for the first time from Mike Stidham. It's going to be an interesting race to find out how it actually shakes down pace-wise. Flores Giroux picks up the mound. It'll be interesting to see which one of these fillies really is going to appreciate this mile and yep. an eighth distance. Many of them, including Stallion uh, Aris, stretching out for the first time. The number two is in flexibility for Chad Brown. This is a daughter of Scat Daddy that was so visually impressive in winning a maiden race on the turf at Belmont last time out. I have a feeling this horse is going to be bet hard. She is arguably the horse to beat off of that last race, but there's a looming question of surface over her head. Absolutely. You don't know if she's going to be able to handle the tapita surface. The one thing that you can say that's in her corner, it looks like there is going to be quite a bit of speed signed on in here. She's going to come from the back of the pack. I have to be honest. It seems like everything, well, you have to respect Chad Brown, obviously, but everything he sends out gets over bet now, and she just is a horse to me that I'll take a shot against. Do you feel the number three, Gertie T, is more effective at shorter distances? She recently won an open non-winners of one other than sprinting at seven furlongs. She set a nice three-wide tracking trip, rolled by in the stretch. I thought she was struggling just a little bit late, and I'm a little concerned about her getting a mile and an eighth, but from a figure standpoint, that 77 from last time stacks up well. It, the 77 does, but my only sort of lingering problem is if you strip the 77 she's not nearly fast enough so you you need to hope if you like her you need to hope the 77 is legit perhaps ghostly presence is an intriguing horse at a price she was good enough to win the quarter of a million dollar princess elizabeth stakes as a two-year-old filly going two turns now she's had two races they haven't been exactly impressive for two starts this year but perhaps she's rounding back to her best form for a very hot trainer the, the only thing for me i wonder if she's just not training on as a three-year-old and keep in mind the day that she won that stakes race she was almost 20 to 1 and end stone spit the bit at the end it's just she's not for me fans of buyer speed figures are going to naturally gravitate to holy helena who won a maiden special weight last time out at belmont park her first time going long with an 86 buyer speed figure the problem with that race is that it was on dirt and holy helena is now going to have to successfully transfer that form to synthetic it's not one of my favorite angles no especially at a short price you know it's one of those things okay if you're going to have a, a horse try a surface for the first time make sure you're going to get paid with a horse that might be one of the favorites She's not for me. Inspired Val goes out for the Cassie Barn. She is still a maiden, but she's pretty good. She's got some tactical speed, but she is going to have to stretch out. I think she's going to be close to the pace, maybe sitting second off Stallion Eris. I was going to say, another horse that just kind of figures into the pace sort of complexion of this race, figures to be forwardly placed. You would imagine if you get successfully you know, the stretch out, maybe she's interesting at a number. Well-bred Miss Adele stretches out for the first time. Gate to wire winner last time out on May 12th, going seven furlongs. She does have a good amount of early speed. Uh, I wonder if she's going to try to sit this time around. But the problem is even if you want to say, okay, she broke her maiden, she graduated last time, she's slow. She's just going to have to improve by leaps and bounds. Financial recovery has a puncher's chance from the back of the pack. I think she's going to get a nice setup. Last time out in the Celine, she had to come extremely wide into the stretch, was bumped a little bit off stride at the 316th pole, and then she flattened out just a bit. Third start of the form cycle. You know what my biggest problem with her is? I understand it looks like she has some sort of a tactical gear. She's going to come from off the pace. Her only win has come in gate-to-wire fashion. This is the kind of horse that, until she proves to me she can pass horses, I don't want her. And Stone uh, has some credentials to be sure. Second in the Celine last time out, beaten favorite. Couldn't really find an excuse. There are some distance questions, but I think this time around, Enstone's going to try to rate going to try to rate, but boy, I, I don't trust her. I mean, we know what she is at this point. She's two for eight. She has competitive figs, and, and she makes sense on paper. She's just not interesting to me. No, you've always been a little bit of a fan of Mythical Mission. Third last time out in the Fury was her first start of the form cycle, and it should set her up well for this race. To me, it was nothing more than a prep. We're going to stretch her out, get the two turns. She should get a decent enough situation where she can track the pace a little bit. I think she's interesting again. Fast place uh, works into the hooves of Ellen Vannon, who came from way out of it to win her first yep. two starts. Last time out in the Fury, her first start probably a shorter distance, pro probably a prep. Like it, second off the layoff, Lasix on. Yeah, Lasix on, and again, you have to assume that the seven-eighths of a mile race was nothing more than a prep. You get the Lasix, I think the pace scenario works for her advantage. She is interesting at a number as well. 
Cinderella is a horse we've always liked a little bit. <laughs> yeah. bit slow on paper. Has she hit her ceiling yet? I think she has. I mean, I, we kind of know what she is at this point, don't we? She's one for seven lifetime. The figs just aren't there. Maybe she's going to be able to take advantage of the pace scenario, but I have to be honest, I don't trust her. Where are you going in here? I, I'm going right back to my girl, Mythical Mission. I think she's interesting. Again, she has a little bit of tactical speed. The first race back off the layoff, I think it was nothing more than a prep. Get her back out to two turns. I like her in here. Stalk and pounce for Endstone, I think, in here. May not get a ton of value, although I have a feeling that the Chad Brown trained horse is going to take a lot of money. I'm going to give Endstone one more chance in the Woodbine Oaks. Remember, head over to the Race of the Day event page on DRF.com. Download those free formulator pass performances uh, and handicap the Woodbine Oaks. Best of luck in the formulator race of the day.